Hey there, Paper Geeks and Glitter Nerds, it's another Crazy Geek Crafter. This week is a... well, it'll probably be a birthday card, but it's for the stock box, uh, so I have something I can easily customize in the future if I need a card and I don't have the time to make one from scratch. It has been a while since I made a uh, card with a different fold than normal, so this is going to be one of those. I will be making several Polaroids with these uh, African animals, um, and it's going to uh, pop up and be a surprise to whoever gets it. So first I have to cut the frames. I cut several uh, since I need it to be quite sturdy to stand up on its own when you bend the card like you saw on the thumbnail. Um, and this is going to take a, a tiny bit of time, but uh, it's worth it. Even though I'm using 240 grams paper, it still needs that extra layer to be sturdy. In the beginning, I did toy around with the idea of making the biggest uh, Polaroid frame into a shaker, but I decided against it since the shaking and the... Uh, the uh, I forgot the name of it. The easel card. I had to pause for a moment and think about it. It's an easel card. Uh, shaking and easel cards don't match too well together. You could do it, but I, I think it'll be uh, too much. Instead of uh, stamping out the images on the uh, Gumia pen paper, I use Nina because I'm going to use my alcohol markers to color it and that is what works best for me. Um, the Gumia pen paper does not handle alcohol ink very well, but it's a great uh, card base and uh, general crafting companion, just not for coloring. I have a tiny bit of uh, removable adhesive on this piece of acetate in my stamping tool here so I can uh, put the uh, very tiny frames in the middle and be, be better able to position the stamp where I want it. Now I only have a rough estimate of where the frame will be and I can adjust it a bit uh, when I go to glue the frame on top. Now I just have to make it all do as I want. You saw me draw first on the inside of the die to get a rough shape of, uh, of the frame. Now I am adding a few millimeters all the way around to make sure that I color in enough to fill out the frame. There won't be a piece of white showing when I glue it down. So just widening a bit uh, of the area and I will color over it anyway. Uh, just to be sure everything is, in, uh, is colored in. There's no need to color the entire thing. 
so that's why I am just making some pencil lines to help me but make sure that the pencil line is beyond where you need them otherwise they will show through your coloring now I need some ground uh, background ground for my critters here and I'm using a copic multiliner uh, and I can see that the the line is very crooked on the horizon, so I need him to have a reason for that, so I'm going to draw him a rock to sit on. For the rest of these, it doesn't really matter much um, about the horizon line. But the lion did look kind of funny. Crooked. Funny. Now I don't do much background uh, coloring, so uh, this was a good test for me, because they're smaller pictures. and. Uh, it won't matter as much if it doesn't turn out perfect.
with everything glued and cut and colored, I'm ready to make the card base. And I'm making this one because my normal card bases fold the wrong way for what I wanted. So I have to make one myself and this was the easiest way for me to do it. I took a scrap that I knew was full length of the uh, 12 by 12 and then hacked it down so it fit with the standard size, European size by the way, European. Um, and then I made a score somewhere middle-ish on the front flap and now I need some decorative papers to stabilize the cardstock. Here we go. Found a nice green one and I think it fits perfectly. And I'm going to eyeball all these measurements. Uh, I know the width of course of the card but I didn't know where exactly I scored it so I just uh, used the card for reference and draw little tick marks I can use in the cutter. Like I said, this is supposed to be a ready to custom card, but I did want something on it uh, to start with. And uh, that's going to be the word surprise. And I cut out the part where I scrambled to figure out how to spell surprise. It always eludes me if it's an S, C or Z in surprise. So, but I hope I got it right. Now this uh, dark brown will be a good offset to the uh, green. I do make a mistake when cutting this, since I didn't think about that uh, the wood grain would maybe matter uh, to the letters and the, the view of the letters, but I don't think anyone will really notice that one of the O's were cut uh, in the other direction. I hope not, at least. As you see, I line up these letters very neatly and try every trick in the book to keep them straight and even. I don't put that much glue on it. Uh, I don't think it needs just to, uh, to adhere to the strip. And it's a good thing I didn't do it because here, the set escapes. And when I try to put it back on straight, I make some of the other letters crooked. So now. Because I didn't glue too much underneath each letter, I could actually twist them a bit so it looked like it was on purpose. Which it wasn't. Here I kind of forget the principle of uh, making a stopper for an easel card. It has to be low profile so you can close the card, but it can't be so low profile that it can't keep the easel up. And here I picked a piece of foam I had laying around that is four pieces high. That is way too much. So I cut a new piece instead, brand new, one layer, and it'll do the job just fine. I keep fiddling with the pictures and maybe one of the other combinations I made was better, but this is how it's going to end up. Mm. 
when you glue on the element, remember to only put glue on the bottom half so you don't actually glue the card flat. It's very important and to me it was lucky that the horizon line kind of uh, matched with the folding line of the easel so I on the back could see how far up I could put the glue. That was practical. And uh, I did think maybe I should put an extra picture down here to complete the look but like I said I would like this to be a card I can uh, customize if I need to. So therefore the bit of extra space under the lion and this extra green space under the surprise is going to allow me to put in a name or a year or some kind of sentiment uh, to this particular person. That's why it may not be 100% finished, but it is as finished as I need it to be to be in my stock box. I didn't add any embellishments either. Um, that might come later, but I don't think it needs it. But I hope you enjoyed the card nonetheless. Until next time, I hope you'll be having a good day, evening or night.